Well, hey again, it's Pastor Barrett, and uh, as we continue worship this morning, we are going to have a time together in God's Word. As we continue our series and our focus on identity, uh, building our identity upon who God says that we are in Him. I'm here at uh, a special location today, and I told you about that already. Um, Actually, we have chosen uh, this location for a purpose uh, because this is actually Mud Island River Park. Uh, If you're from Memphis, you probably recognize where I am. Uh, If you're not from Memphis, I am right now uh, basically on an island. That's why we call it Mud Island in the middle of the Mississippi River. And uh, I am in a park, a public park here in our city called Mud Island River Park. Um, but it's actually a part of the uh, of this of the park that, if if you're just look around, if you know this area, you know this already. But if you don't, you can even just kind of look around at where I am right now. Um, it's kind of an interesting uh, park because honestly, I I've been in Memphis for about well just over a decade, and this park there's just not been much happening here. Um, in fact, like over the years, it just has seemed like. Um, nobody is really paying attention to this park. It is such um, a valuable piece of property. And yet, over the years, uh, I have just kind of watched as this park has just felt pretty much neglected. If you've ever been here, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, even just this this pond right behind me here is so interesting. I mean, it used to be just filled with water. I had paddle boats in it where people could come out and, and kind of uh, boat around and enjoy this piece of property. But now it's literally like just sitting here empty um there's like weeds i mean you guys could probably tell like weeds kind of growing up uh through the cracks um other parts of this this park are like it the replica of the mississippi river that used to to run with water to show you kind of what it was like is is now uh, run really uh, completely dry and it's just sitting here and again kind of weeds kind of growing up um it is just it's a it's a strange thing and I don't really know what to do with it, um, but it is what it is. And the reality of this park feeling kind of abandoned um, is, is, is very real. And I was thinking recently, you know, in our own identity, our own personal identity, um, so often I really believe that many of us feel a lot like this park, this Mud Island River Park, this park where I'm standing right here right now. Uh, Many of us feel like quite abandoned at times, like no one even sees us, like no one even cares, like no one even like pays attention to us. Um, It's almost like we've, we, we, we have this, this sense of, of self as, as one who has been abandoned, one who's been neglected, um, perhaps by God, perhaps by others. Um, and we can just kind of carry this identity. And this park, if we're honest, has carried that identity for quite some time, a place of, that's just been neglected and abandoned. I mean, most everybody in our city knows it. And I think if we're honest, there are a lot of us who carry an identity about us that we are kind of feeling neglected and we feel abandoned. We feel, let's say today, un- unseen. And I know right now, um, in this time of the coronavirus pandemic especially, my goodness, uh, just as we thought we were seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, um, we had been running this crazy marathon of a, of a race trying to just endure through this time of great suffering uh, in these last months and feeling like we we're coming to a place of maybe reopening and return to normalization. Uh, and we have, many of us, been suffering uh, feeling isolated and feeling alone, feeling neglected and, and abandoned. And here we are once again getting news that rates are on the rise and hospitalizations are at capacity and it looks like we're gonna have to be waiting still a while longer. And many of us, I truly believe, have this feeling of this park right here. But I wanna tell you today that that ought not be our identity as people of God. You know, we're not the only people in history who have felt this way. When I think about those characters in the Bible who have gone through similar times, um, I think of the Apostle John. Honestly, not many of us think about this part of the story of the Apostle John, because when we think of him, we think of 
the John that was just excited to be in the very presence of Jesus, the one who he called himself over and over the apostle who Jesus loved. But toward the end of John's life, what we read in the pages of scripture is that John experienced a time where, honestly, he could have very easily kind of been trapped in an identity of feeling unseen, uncared for, unknown, uh, kind of forgotten about. In fact, uh, what we read about at the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation is the reality of what happened to John as he lived by faith in Jesus and he lived faithfully for him. We read in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. What we know is at the end of John's life, he ends up actually because of his faith in Jesus and because of his faithfulness in Jesus, it's nothing that John had done wrong, but because of what he had done right, um, actually ended up exiled on an island, much like the one where this park is right here, but very much isolated, put there totally away from everybody else in a type of imprisonment out in the middle of the Aegean Sea. And I can just imagine perhaps that John there on Patmos in his exile was struggling, struggling with identity, struggling with whether or not he really was seen. I mean, I can imagine like this is not the end of the story that John probably would have written for his own life. This is not the plan that maybe he had. Um, this is not the way that he wanted it to go or maybe thought that it would go. Similar to how some of us uh, feel right now in the middle of this pandemic, uh, just going seriously, like here we are, like this is not what, this is not what we thought 2020 would be. This is not what this prolonged season we thought would look like. Um, but even more so to the degree that his own life is completely disrupted and he is in complete isolation and exile. And you've just got to imagine uh, the feelings, the thoughts, the, the just the, the, the excruciating nature of the circumstances that he were in, uh, that he was in, he was fighting that feeling of of being unseen, unknown, and that's why if you got it, if you think about the Book of Revelation and you and you take a perspective, a very personal perspective of John's experience, uh, why I think this book is so precious. You know, most of us, when we turn to the book of Revelation, what we're thinking about is this book that's written to try to detail what's going to happen in the future at the end of time. And yes, it, it is good for that. It is good for teaching and training and understanding and those things. But think about for John what this book really represented. Uh, when, when John says there right after uh, verse 9 that, that, that God shows up to him in the middle of his exile in Patmos and he brings to him a vision given by the Holy Spirit of, of God. What John is feeling is very personal. Yes, he writes it all down, and yes, it's for us, but first you've got to know it was for him. And he feels with what God gives him in this, the very present care of God. In that moment, you have to, you have to know just how the, his identity shifted. He, he realizes while he might feel alone circumstantially, he might feel isolated, he might feel neglected, he might feel that no one cares, suddenly everything changes when he realizes, when God meets him there, he realizes God sees me. God cares about me. God has not forgotten me. God is here with me. God is moving toward me. God is gracious right here, right now. God sees me. He knows me, and it changes everything. And not only is, is it about God's present care, his, his showing up right there in this moment uh, that we read about. But also the whole book is a reminder to John in a very personal way that not only is God saying, I'm here with you right now, but I have promised to be present with you tomorrow and the tomorrow after that tomorrow and the tomorrow after that tomorrow and forever, forever and for always tomorrow. I, I am telling you, John, I'm giving you a vision, John. I'm giving you a promise, John. I am with you now, and I will always be with you forever. I am making a way. I have given you my word. 
you will be forever with me and I will be forever with you. It's such a beautiful thing. And what we know is in the pages of scripture that this is not just true of John. I mean, we can think over and over and over about characters in scripture who went through similar times of isolation, of feeling like, does anybody see me? Does anybody care? And we know, uh, just think about Joseph, like during his time in prison. I mean, imagine what he would have felt. Uh, imagine Hannah in the midst of uh, her infertility, uh, just pouring out her heart for years, longing for something, wondering if anybody saw her, wondering if anybody cared about her, wondering if, if anybody knew or if God knew. Uh, Leah and her time of waiting. I think about David uh, as he uh, was promised to be king and yet thrown out and on the, on the run from, from Saul and wondering, you know, in the wilderness there, in the desert place, does anybody see me? Does anybody know me? Does anybody care? What will happen? And yet time and time again, what we read in the pages of the scripture is that these people who have gone through similar circumstances and fought those identity battles just as us found out again and again and again that everything changes when you realize that God does see me. God does know me. God does care about me. God is moving toward me. He has made promise to me and he is faithful to fulfill it. I with him, he with me. And they realize, they realize that their identity can be built upon, not upon how they feel circumstantially, but upon the truth of who God is, how he knows, how he cares, and what he has promised. And it changes everything. And the beautiful thing about how God sees, it's different than man sees. This is actually what amazed Nathaniel. We read about in John chapter 1 that before uh, Jesus actually met him, that Nathaniel realized that he knew him. And what Nathaniel came, had to, to reality with, it transformed his understanding because he realized that God saw him even before he really had opportunity to talk with him. God already knew him. He knew him through and through. Not only did he see him with his eyes, but he saw him in his heart. And that transformed everything. And the reality is um, that this is true for all of us. Um, when other people see us, what we know they see is our circumstances. And they start from the outside of us and they have to work in. And that is why it's so hard for us sometimes to really believe that anybody actually sees, that anybody actually knows, that anybody actually cares because we feel that no one could really know the depth of who we are. But what we learn about God and the way that he sees, that he doesn't start from the outside in. Yes, he does care about the circumstance and he does care about the outside, but where he starts is from the inside and then he moves out. He sees, he begins to see from the depth of who we really are. What, what we really feel, what we're really going through, what we really need. And he moves toward us in the deep place, the deepest place of who we are, and then moves out. And this is why the psalmist in 139 just proclaims how wonderful it is. He sees me, he knows me, he knows my thoughts, he knows my ways, he hymns me in behind him before. There's nothing that is hidden from him. And he proclaims this knowledge in Psalm 139. This knowledge is just too wonderful for me. In other words, it's a transformation of identity when we can rest and receive the truth of who God is, how he sees, how he knows, and how he moves toward us with the promise of his presence today and his presence tomorrow and his presence forever for those who believe and receive what he's done for us, his love for us and his son Jesus. You know, one thing I love about this Mud Island River Park is that a few years back, um, the city of Memphis actually came here and chose to plant this huge, like amazing, very decorative sign that spells out the city of Memphis in big letters, like right here in the middle of this kind of otherwise abandoned park. And I think it's so interesting because they planted it and then they like told everybody about it. Like it was this huge like public relations push. And they said, you know what, we're, we're putting this huge like Memphis sign. This is, our city's gonna be known like by this sign. People are gonna go and take pictures by it. And it's gonna be like a big thing. We're gonna put it right here and we're gonna put it in the middle of this park. And what's so interesting about it is like, otherwise like you would think this park was neglected. This park was abandoned. This, 
this, there was no plans uh, for the future of this park by the way this park probably felt uh, to itself and others felt about it. And yet Memphis came and said, hey, wait, 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 actually that is not the truth at all. Like, we see you park, like, we care about you, like you're not neglected, we, you are known, like we, we are so much like wanting to communicate that like this park is known by this city that we're gonna come out and put like our, our name is gonna be attached to this place. And we want everybody to know that, that this is our place, like we are here. And in fact, while you haven't seen like progress yet, like there's coming a day that you're gonna see the fullness of the plans and the desires that this city has for this park come into fruition. It's so interesting. And what I was thinking about this week is how amazing it is that in, in some way we can understand that like this is God's heart for us. While this park may feel abandoned, might you come and look and you might go, wait, what? Like, like this is the most neglected place, weeds growing up, what's going on here? Like the reality is that's not the case and Memphis has put its name in the middle and in our lives while we might feel abandoned, like while it might look like, like we're in the middle of this, this season of exile or we're stuck at home or we're in these situations that no one knows or that no one cares about or we might feel neglected and that weeds are growing up and whatever else. The reality is it's just not so in our lives. That is not our primary identity. God has come and he has put so-called his, his name right in, in our midst. He has, has planted his very presence in us and he has said, I am with you and you're with me and, and I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Like you are mine. You are not unseen. You are seen. You are not unknown. You are known. You are not uncared for. You are cared for. Like I see you. I have planted my very name upon you, my presence in your midst. And in fact, that's what we see in Psalm 46 where literally in verse 4, there's a description there. There's a river that makes glad the city of God, the holy habitation, the dwelling place of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. It's that picture. Like God is right in the midst of her. This is our primary identity. And because of that, it says, we will not be moved. In verse 7, it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. He's with us. And we will not be moved. And the picture we have of the end time is the fulfillment of all of, of God's promise, he is with us. Yes, he's with us today, but he will be with us forever and ever. And in fact, we will see a day that it's not just God's name attached to us, but it is his very presence and we will enjoy him forever. And so friends, friends, if you're feeling like the river park today, I, want, I just wanna remind you that the, the name of God has been planted in our midst, his very presence, his, his seeing us, his caring for us, his committing to us, his promising and provision for us. He is in our midst and our identity now and forevermore is not that we're unseen, but that forever we are seen and we are known and with God himself. And I hope, I hope and pray that you know this, that you trust this, that you receive this, and that you will allow it to transform everything about you today and every day from now on. God is with us and that changes everything.